this whole thing is predicated on love and joy that I really enjoy this work. I really love this work. I really love helping people out. And so I started off with acknowledging that this is what I want to do. Like, this is what I love. So there's no other place that I want to be, right? This is the field I'm in. This is what I want to do. Um, I, I love basketball. So I started off in basketball. And when I started, what I committed to was sticking with it, was, was seeing this whole thing through, being devoted to it. And I thought, if I'm doing what I love, then the devotion should be a little bit easier because if I'm already doing the ultimate thing, even if let's say there's no money right away or I'm struggling right away or I can't figure out how to make it work, I'm struggling with what I love. So stay in the struggle. So you got to have purpose and meaning. Purpose and meaning have extreme confidence. Purpose, meaning, and service have a resiliency that cannot be stopped, <laughs> cannot be stopped. So if you're in a place of service, serving your heart, serving what you love, how can that be stopped? Now you have to willingly show up and do it, but that's the whole key is no matter what athletes say, even when Aaron Gordon was young and he didn't quite know what I was doing for four years, there's a really powerful moment. He looked at me one time, I went down, talked to him, just gave him game for like 15 minutes and then left. And I don't even ask if he understands. I just give him all the stuff and leave. And he was like, hey, hey, wait, 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 where are you going? And he was like, how come you don't need my validation? He was so blown away that I didn't need his validation. You know what I mean? And he was like, everyone needs my validation, man. Everyone needs me to like, if they teach me a new way to dribble a basketball, they need me to go out and do it and then say that like they taught me this thing. And I was like, Aaron, brother, this isn't about me. This is about you. I'm already validated, bro. I'm serving. I've already found it. I've followed my heart, right? I'm serving. I don't need you. You just come across my path as I serve. There it is. You can, you can take this. Mental skills training works with any human being, right? So you can see it can be an athlete, could be an executive, could be a teacher, could be any human being. This is good for us. So you can take this space anywhere. Uh, as far as like mental health, like broadening it, I would just be aware of what you're capable of doing you know, and make sure that if you're going into different spaces, like for me, I'm very clearly a proactive mental skills coach, which means I'm a passionate teacher, right? I teach this stuff and then coach people on, on a skill set. And then once it goes to out of my expertise, right? I pass it off to colleagues I have. So, but you can absolutely take this into any space that you want to go into uh, where you have passion, where you care about it. I just started in basketball because I just loved who, uh, but I find myself doing it in all kinds of spaces now. Some of the spaces that surprised me were like surgeons. Surgeons reach out, lawyers reach out. The thing that most surprised me was people uh, in relationships um, looking for dates. So the process of going on a date with someone can be very vulnerable, can be very uncomfortable to put yourself out there. And I found people respond back going, man, this has helped me in my relationships. So it's, this stuff helps in all, all aspects, JJ. It, it, it really depends on where you want to take it and where, where you feel called to serve, you know? By the time you forget that you're like, you know, you totally forget that you're doing it to receive something. By the time you actually forget about all that, you start receiving so much shit. And then you're like, this goes back to Carrie's question. When you start receiving all this stuff, how the hell do I do this all? You know what I mean? Like, how the hell do I find time to reflect or to pause? Like, if you keep giving and you abundantly serve and give and you do that for one, two, three, four, seven, eight, 10, 12, 13, 14 years in a row, do you know what happens? Do you know how much abundance comes back to you? It's overwhelming. And so Carrie, coming back to your question, I think some of the challenges of so much comes back to me, so much abundance comes my way that sometimes it's hard to sleep. Sometimes there's so much energy and so much trying to come my way that I literally have to be like, hey, like just make it stop tonight. Like make it stop, you know? And or else you're just like, it's like you can't be at the rock concert 24 hours, you know? Like you gotta sleep. So. Uh, anyway, if you haven't figured it out, I like to give, and that's where I find the pleasure, and that's the shit that shocked all the NBA players that I work with because everyone wants to take from them. So if you just be a giver and you devote yourself to it over time, take care of yourself, you're working out, you're eating, you're doing all those stuff, like, yeah, it all works out. <laughs> and everything I just said is a guarantee, just if you're wondering. I just said a guarantee. If you're lucky enough to wake up tomorrow, do it again for tomorrow. And then if you're lucky enough to wake up again, just do it again. 
just do if you're doing what you love today where else are you going to go if you're doing something that you love it's that you're in the right struggle you're in the beautiful struggle yeah you have to go through it you got to work through your shit but you're in it and so you bring joy to it you bring joy to the struggle uh when your mind comes up and goes what it's in it for me how come no one recognizes me you say shut up and keep giving 